Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now to magnify his name, to glorify his name, and to always put Jesus first place. We serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty God. We serve a big God. We serve a God who is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. He reigns. His promises are everlasting. His words are true. That's why you can always count on Jesus. That's why you can always depend on Jesus. You can always rely on Jesus. Because Jesus, I said because Jesus should be your everything. Not your second thing, not your third thing, but Jesus should always be your everything. And that's why you should always be first place in your life. No matter what you got going on, Jesus should always be first place. Not your parents, not social media, not your children, not your pets, not your cars, not your vehicle, not your jobs, not your friends, not nobody. Jesus should always be first place in your life. See, praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. Because the God we serve, the God we praise, is still on the throne, and he is still performing miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business, and he is still in the blessing business. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. And he is so worthy. He is so ready to be praised. He is that awesome. He is that mighty. He is that powerful. God is so good that he cannot even fail you, my brothers and sisters. He is too faithful to fail you. That's how good he is. He is so good that he cannot even change his mind on what he told you, or what he showed you, or what he started in your life. He is so faithful that he can't even change that. Whatever it is that he started, it's already done. It's already complete. The dreams and the vision that he showed you, it has to manifest. He is that faithful that it has to manifest. That's how faithful he is. The path that he has you on, that path is going to lead you to your destination. He is so faithful, he knows for sure that it's going to lead you to your destination. He is that faithful. He is that mighty. He is that powerful. He is that awesome. Yes, he is. That's why I love you, some Jesus. That's why I praise him for who he is and what he does. I praise him because he paid the price for me. I love him because he saved my life. I love him because when nobody else was there, he was always there. I'm in love with him when everybody spoke out of my life. He stayed there. He stayed right there. And even when I turned my back on him, he never turned his back on me. He was still right there available for me to return back. That's why I love him the way I do. That's why I praise the way I do. That's why I glorify him the way I do. If you ain't praising him for that, or loving him for that, it's so wrong with you, my brother and sister. Praise is an everyday thing. Because he is still on the throne. And he is still performing miracles and wonders. Each and every day. In the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business. And he's always in the blessing business. If you don't know anything about him. Try him out. I promise you. That'd be the best thing. Best thing. That will ever happen in your life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we just come before you peacefully and humbly right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for who you are, what you've done, what you're about to do. We thank you, Father God, for this word that we're about to receive. We thank you, Father God, for this powerful message today that's going to keep us full and keep us satisfied. Oh, Heavenly Father God, there is no place that we'd rather be at right now today, Jesus. But right here in your house, right in your sanctuary, Father God. Just thank you, just praise you, just glorify you, just magnify your holy name. 
Oh God, we thank you for everything, Father God. We thank you for the open doors, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for the door that's closed. We thank you, Father God, how you have your way with us. We thank you, Father God, that we can always call you upon your name, that you will always be right there. We thank you, Father God, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Father God, for the rain that's coming. We thank you, Father God, for what you're about to do in our life. We thank you, Father God, for the connection. We thank you, Father God, for the resources. We thank you, Father God, for the love. Father God, allow your presence to move to this place. Allow your love to move to this place. Allow your angels to join with us in praise and worship right now in your place. Because this is your house, God. The house that you built on solid ground. The house that you built on solid foundation. The house that cannot be moved, shaken, or bothered. Oh, God. I know that you're about to show up and I know that you're about to show out. Oh, God. Someone's going to give their life to you today. Father God, you're going to heal someone through this sermon today. You're going to deliver someone through this sermon today. Heavenly Father God, you're welcome to invite it. You have an open opportunity to enter to your sanctuary right now, on your YouTube channel right now, on your platform right now, in my sister's home right now, and to my sister's life, to my brother's home and to my brother's life. Father God, you have your way. Speak to him right now. Fill them up with more. Fill them up with more of the Holy Spirit right now. Cry their thoughts right now, Father God, so they can hear you. Soften their heart, Father God, so you can move through them right now. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. You're invited to enter into the kingdom of the Lord right now, in the sanctuary right now, on Jesus' YouTube channel right now, on this platform right now, into my brother's home, into my brother's life, into my sister's home, into my sister's life. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to be our comfort right now. I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, can you please be our best friend? Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to fill us up with more of the Holy Spirit. I'm asking you to quiet us right now. Control our anxieties right now. Control our emotions, our feelings right now. So we can hear and see whatever it is that God trying to tell us today. Father God, I'm just saying just thank you for who you are. Father God, we're nothing without you. So we're going to continue to seek you, praise you, glorify you. And Father God, we just want to say thank you to let you know that we are available for praise, we are available for service, and that we are available for the kingdom. And Father God, we give you all thanks, we give you all praise, we give you all glory. In your holy, precious, mighty name, let the church say amen and amen. God is so good, and he is so wonderful, and so mighty, and so powerful. It's like praise is an everyday thing, praying is an everyday thing, repentance is also an everyday thing too. Why? We all drop the ball each and every day. We all make mistakes and we all fall fall short of God's mercy and mercy. Every last one of us do. We're not perfect at all. The word of God said that we're going to fall short and we do fall short. Sin is sin. It doesn't matter how you commit the sin. It doesn't matter how little it is or how big it is. Sin is sin. Our job is to repent so we can ask God so God can forgive us. That is our job. Not to try to hide it. Not try to sweep up on the rug. And not try to shoot it, Cody. Because he saw what you done. He heard what you said. And he was aware of the situation. So if you can't keep it real and be honest with Jesus, you can't keep it real and be honest with nobody. So I need my keep it real brothers and sisters right now to join me in repentance if that's okay with you. Lord Jesus, I ask of you to please forgive me. All my sisters, all my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, that we done wrong in the sight of your eyes. Father God, please forgive me, all my sisters, all my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, that we had in our heart that was not part of you. Father God, please forgive me, all my sisters, all my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, that we had in our mind that was not part of your Father's will. Please forgive us, Jesus. Wash us clean by night of day, Jesus. Purify us through your blood by night of day, Jesus. Wash us as white as snow right now today, Jesus. Oh, Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiveness for our sin. Thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for the clean slate. Thank you, Father God, for the opportunity. Thank you, Father God, for coming through. Thank you, Father God, for understanding. I just want to say thank you. And Father God, before I get started, it's something that's always in my mind about you. It's something that stays in my spirit about you. It's something that stays on the fruit of my tongue and my lips about you. 
And I just got to tell you how I really feel about you, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, 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 Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my heart at you every day, Jesus. Because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, Jesus. Because I can't thank you enough. That's why I trust you the way I do, Jesus. Because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm going to continue to brag and boast about you and seek you in your kingdom every day, Jesus. Because I can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 I just can't thank you enough. And if you're ready for God's word, let the truth of man and let Jesus know right now that you can't thank him enough. It's going to be a little personal. But I'm going to keep it real because it does happen. When someone try to have a secret affair on you, my brothers and sisters, the least thing about them, they don't want you to know what they are doing. But God said he they knew they had a secret affair on you. He knew for quite some time. And sometimes, my brothers, sometimes my sisters, we don't see the one who we so-called in love with or have a secret affair behind our back. Because they tell us one thing and show us something totally different. But the whole time, they live a double life. They live a double standard. They live in darkness because we don't, they don't want us to see who they really are. People, one thing about a person that's having a secret affair, eventually, the, the light will come. The truth will come out. And they will be exposed. And one thing will get me about a person that's trying to have a secret affair, once they get caught, they want to be mad at you. They want to take it out on you. For what? What did you do? You didn't have that affair. You didn't cheat. You didn't have you didn't you didn't have any secrets. They did that. But for some odd reason, they want to get mad at you. So they get mad at you because the truth came out. They get mad at you because they got exposed. They got mad at you is because when it came out, they didn't want you to know the dirt that they was doing behind your back. They didn't want you to know that one shred of evidence about them. But they get really mad when you say no more. That you're moving on. Because this wasn't your first time having an affair on us. We gave you we gave you a chance the first time. Even some of y'all probably gave them a, a chance the second time. But this affair was a totally different affair. This affair was a low ball. This affair hurting your feelings to the core that you can't even look at him or look at her the same anymore. This affair did something to you mentally, physically, socially, and spiritually. You can't trust him no more. You can't trust her no more for the wrong and the dirt that they did. The secret affair, they didn't want you to know. They didn't want you to know about who they were sleeping with behind your back, my brothers and sisters. It was all good when they was doing the dirt. It was all good when they were trying to shame you. It was all good when they was lying right there in front of your face. But when the truth came and the evidence presented itself to you, it's not not, it's not light that you were not looking for the truth. It was not light that you were not looking for the evidence. The truth came to your front door. The evidence came to your front door. And the exposure came to your front door. So when all that came to your front door, without you asking, without you looking for it, the tables started to turn. And once the tables started to turn, they wanted to cop, cop a pee with you and get mad at you. 
for doing what went down. And the first thing they have that dash to say, why are you listening to them? It's not the point that we are listening to the people. The point is that they have, they have shown us proof of the double standard and the double life that you was once living. And we ask you multiple times, many a times, are you messing around? Are you having an affair? And you kept telling us no. Why you keep saying that? I never cheat on you. But the whole time, you was doing your dirt. And now, God has given that brother and God has given that sister the strength to free themselves from that toxic relationship that was not bearing any fruit. From that toxic relationship that kept you up all times of the night, that kept you up stressing, that kept you up from not eating, that kept you up from not performing your job at work. God said, I got to set you free from this because it's not doing you no good mentally, physically, socially, or spiritually. See, but one thing about the cheaters, they never tend to get caught. One thing about the cheater, they were going to continue, they were going to, continue to cheat with that person until they got exposed. Their whole, all, their whole ordeal was is for them to continue to sleep with that person. No matter what. They didn't care about anything about hurting you. They, they didn't care anything about shaming you. They thought about their own selfish needs. Their own selfish wants. That's what they thought about. They never thought about you. But they knew that you were the main one. They knew they couldn't make it without you. They knew that you had something to offer. And the sleeves balls didn't. They knew there was something different about you. That's why they want you to know about the secret affair. They didn't care. They didn't care. They told their homeboys. They didn't care. They tell their homegirls. They didn't tell. They tell the stranger. But they did not want you to know. My sisters, they didn't want you to know. My brothers. But it always come to a celebration, and everything come to a halt, and everything come to an end. It always come to a decision that you're going to find out about that secret affair. And if you have any type of doubt or any type of feelings that your significant others is having an affair, today is the day, my brothers and sisters, that you need to ask the Holy Spirit, please enlighten me. Please give me a sign, show me a sign. Is there any foul play that's going on? Is there any infidelity that's going on? Is my woman being faithful? Is my woman being true? Is my man being faithful? Is my man being true? Those things that you got to start asking because I believe that somebody right now is having some doubt. Someone is expecting something. But at the end of the day, my brother and sister, they don't want you to know about that secret affair. They don't want you to know. They do every and anything so you want to find out. But see, they don't know the God we serve, the God we praise and worship. He's going to make sure that you find out because who they having that secret affair with, they're going to make sure that they tell you what's going on. They're going to make sure to tell you how many times they've been meeting up and how long it's been going on. So you can do all things in the dark, but eventually you got to come to the light. See all the little sneakiness that you're doing, all the little dirty things that you're doing, so you don't realize it's got to come to the light. You reap what you sow, my brothers and sisters. And right now, this is reaping season because right now, God is about to expose the cheaters right now. He's about to expose the one who is not keeping it real. He's about to expose the one who is not faithful. He's about to expose the one who is not loyal. He's about to expose the one who you called your main boo, your main love, your man and your woman. Because, see, I knew what you was doing. You've been having a secret fear on my son for quite some time. Jesus said, I know what you've been doing. You've been having a secret fear on my door the whole time. See, they did everything in secret. But God is going to expose them so the whole public going to know. But most of all, what's going to hurt them is when God's going to move you and bless you with somebody who's going to love you. 
who's not going to cheat on you, who's not going to deceive you. And the first thing they're going to say, why do we have to make this announcement public? And the first thing that I would say, or I would have to say, why did you have a secret affair that you couldn't tell me what was going on? So why are you worried about, my brothers and sisters, doing things in public when you did something in secret? You hid something from me. I had to find out the hard way. You hid something from me. I had to find out through, through mutual friends. You hid something from me. I had to find out through social media. You hid something from me. I had to find out something going to the beer parlor. You hid something from me. I had to find out going to the barber shop. You hid something from me. I had to find out going to the mall. You hid something from me. I had to find out going on an old man's crew trip. That's how I found out. But you hid it from me. But you made sure that you told this person, that person, that person. But the main person who you should have told was the one that you were involved with. You left him out. You left her out. But God is not going to leave him out. And God's not going to leave her out. Because when God make it known, he going to make it known publicly. So everybody knows. Because once you get exposed, you get exposed. The light come. You, the, everything about you come. Even shame come. Disappointment come. For the wrong that you have done. And God has gave you plenty of chances and plenty of time for you to stop that affair. He gave you plenty of chances, plenty of opportunity for you to go tell your significant other what's going on. But no, you kept ignoring the sign and you kept ignoring Jesus when he was trying to get your attention. He is not a tape recorder. He is not, he's not no PlayStation game that you feel like that you can pick up, that you can play with him. He ain't about that. But one thing he's going to do, he's going to watch over his daughters. He's going to watch over his sons because he cares for them. And he's going to make sure of their welfare of being taken care of. See, the whole time, you was not taking care of your significant others. You were too busy doing things secretly behind their back. And the whole time, they kept it real with you. The whole time, they was faithful to you. The whole time, they was loyal to you. And the whole time, you was a fraud, my brothers and sisters. So no, there's no need for you to get mad when you get exposed. There's no need for you to get mad when that brother and that sister move on and they find somebody better than you. Don't get mad at their brothers and sisters when they start showing that they knew boo, they knew love on social media. There's no need for you to sit there and say, oh, this is what you're doing now? You want to show everybody in the world that you have moved on? You want to do things publicly? Yes, did you do things secretly? Didn't you do something secretly? You didn't tell me about. So why are you worried about why my brother, my sisters is posting their new love on Facebook or on, or, or on Instagram or on TikTok or on Snapchat? Why are you worried about it? You was not worried about when you were doing your dirt on the low. So why are you worried about what they doing in public? Did you ever think that to take the time out to think about his or her feelings when you was doing dirt, when you was laid up with him or her? You didn't care. You thought about your own selfish ways. You was greedy and you got caught in the act and now you want to be mad at him. Now you want to be mad at her for the wrong and the dirt that you done. Boy, you need to stop it. Girl, bye. I'm just keeping it real. I'm just keeping it real. So I'm left y'all turn y'all back to 2 Samuel chapter 12, and we're going to read verse 12. That's 2 Samuel chapter 12, and we're going to read verse 12. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You did it in secret, but I will do this thing in broad daylight before all Israel. Mm. You did it. My sisters, you did it, my brothers. Secret. You hear the secret. Like God don't know what your secret's about. Like God didn't see your secret. Like God didn't hear your, your secret. Like God was not aware of your secret. He saw it, he heard it, and he was aware with it. So you felt like that God was invisible. 
You feel like that God did not exist. So you fooled yourself. That's what you went wrong at. That's what you played yourself at. He saw about that secret affair. He heard about the secret affair. And he was already aware of the secret affair. And I know for a fact that God told you and he warned you on the first day. Don't you do that. Don't you do that. What did you do? You ignored his voice and you ignored his sign. You want to do what you want to do anyway. You thought the grass was green on the other side. You thought that you got something. You thought that you got a winner. You thought that you had moved on. But you didn't realize it was a setup for you. You didn't realize that you were going to have to pay for the wrong that you done. You didn't realize that you had to pay for the hurt and the damage that you caused their brothers and sisters. So you didn't realize that. So you didn't realize that God had a celebration that was always going to be set up for that son. He had a celebration that was going to be set up for the daughters. And you was going to watch that celebration. You was going to watch that brother. You was going to watch that sister be happy. Because what you did, you didn't let him know. You didn't let her know. Everything that you did, you did in secret like you were not going to get caught. Everything that you did, you did in the dark thinking it was not going to be brought to the light. But it was. And it did. And now the person who you had that secret affair with don't want you no more. Now you don't lost that on him and her and you also don't lost out on your husband and your wife. Now your ex-husband, now your ex-wife has moved on. They no longer want you anymore because now they're in a better position right now and God has blessed them with a, a person who's going to love them, who's not going to cheat on them, who's not going to deceive them. And now you mad. Now you calling your feelings. Why? You was a man when you was doing your dirt. You wasn't mad when you were doing things secretly. You wasn't mad when you didn't let her know or let him know that you were that you was that you was that you was um sleeping on a down low. You didn't let them know. You didn't give them no heads up. You didn't give them a warning. You thought about your own selfish self. Now you got exposed. Now they know the truth. Now they tell you you can never come back to our home again. Go back to him. Go back to her. There's no need to lie about it, my brothers. There's no need to lie about my sisters because they already know the truth. Not only because someone said it, it's because now they can see it because they have physical proof. It's not like they had to go search for it. The search came straight to them. It's not like they was going to look for the trouble. It came and presented itself to them. So they know too much about you, my sisters. They know too much about you, my brothers. You just didn't keep it real. But what they don't understand is, how can you get mad when you're the one that was doing dirt? How can you get mad at me when you're the one who had a secret affair? You didn't want me to know. You didn't want my brothers to know. You didn't want my sisters to know. But now you're mad because you see that we have moved on? How's that? You can call us all the names in the world. By the end of the day, God know our heart. And he know our, our true intentions. He knew that we never cheated on y'all. But you did the opposite. So my point I made today, why are you mad? Why are you upset? Why are you taking on that brother right now? Why are you taking on my sisters right now? When you the one who was doing wrong. You the one who was living a foul life. It was you. And if you know that God is talking to you and this word is for you, and if you don't know for sure, and if you have an uncertain, today is today, my brother and sister, that you need to go take the time out, go pray to God, go ask him a question, and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you, right now, today, is there any kind of infidelity going on? And to sit there and just wait, and have the Holy Spirit to speak to you. The Holy Spirit going to let you know today. Amen? Amen. Can you please pray on me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you, to come into our life, to guide us, direct us, to use us. And I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, by us praying a simple little prayer, that God is already working everything God in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, leave me a comment. 
my YouTube channel, Swingers.LT. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always praise him. Always keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he is the author and perfecter of your faith. You continue to trust him even though you don't see anything. You continue to trust him even though that your situation, your circumstances is still looking the same. You continue to trust him. You continue to hold on to his unchangeable hand. Don't you dare ever let it go because you never know when your situation is going to turn out and work for you today or not. You continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up too. I'm serving Minister LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' name, amen.